Hello, Al Jean. Hi. How you doing today? I'm great. Great. It's great to have you on. Uh, terrific to be here. Well, we'll talk about the new Simpsons episode coming up. I know you have the special crossover episode with uh, Futurama. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect from that? Well, you know, um, Futurama is a great show. I thought so from the beginning, and um, it just takes me 15 years to get around to things. <laughs> so, um, you know, we thought if we were going to cross over, there'd be nothing that would match us stylistically better, nothing that would be, you know, um, as perfect a, a crossover. And um, we got the, fo- the full voice cast from Futurama, and it's going to air this Sunday. Yeah, and I know uh, Futurama ended its run last year, but uh, was this something that you have been planning for a while, or why did you decide to bring it back? Well, um, I knew that it was coming to an end, and I thought, gee, I wouldn't want to, you know, I would never be able to see those characters again, and I thought our universe would be a perfect one. We had Bender on, you know, like brief appearance on one episode. Uh, so we just went for it, and, you know, there's a time travel plot, which you have to accept, but as long as you do, then it all makes sense, and... Um, you know, once we did it, we just said we're going to try to put every Futurama character we can fit in the episode. So there, there are quite a few, and if you're a Futurama fan, I think you'll be really happy. Yeah, and I know the Simpsons recently had a crossover with the Family Guy as well. So is this going to lead to maybe more of these in the future? You think? I don't think so. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, what made them both special, and the other one was hosted by the Family Guy writers, but you know, who wrote the, that, that crossover, is that they're so unique. People go, okay, this is coming. We're going to do it once, and we're not going to do it again. Um, I sure hope there are more Futuramas, but I don't anticipate us crossing over again. I think we kind of got, you know, um, hit all the bases that we wanted to. Sure, sure. And I have to ask you, I know you graduated from Harvard and you have a degree in mathematics, so how does that lead to to writing for The Simpsons exactly? Well, certainly it's a good prerequisite for writing a Futurama episode. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What happened was uh, I was pre-med and I met uh, Mike Reese, who was my writing partner for many years, He was on the Harvard Lampoon, and I thought, oh, my God, these guys are the funniest people I've ever met. Uh, And it turns out I work with them still. I I, um, just found that to be just such a more exciting career to take. And, you know, I'd always been a fan of literature and reading and writing, of course, so that was part of it. But um, there are quite a few writers, both Simpsons and Futurama, who have uh, math degrees, PhDs. One writer we have used to be a professor at Yale. Well, and I have to ask you your memories of those first few years, because it seems like, you know, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing the albums and the T-shirts and all the merchandise. I mean, that was just a crazy time. It kind of took over pop culture. You could walk down the street, I'm not exaggerating, and you go, I'm going to try to, like, find somebody talking about The Simpsons, and you would find it. Or I would take the Los Angeles Times, and I'm going, I want to find a Simpsons reference. Every day there'd be some reference. Um... It was, I, you know, I don't, I don't remember Beatlemania, but I think it was similar. It was just so huge. And when we were there the first few years, my worry was always it was going to flame out because it was so big, and we would really kill ourselves on the episodes that we did to make sure, you know, that it lasted, that it wasn't just sort of a fad. And um, it's funny because people will now say, that the very first episodes, which I'm very proud to have worked on, you know, they don't like them quite as much as seasons like, say, four and five. I, those first episodes could not have been more popular or more well regarded at the time. Yeah, and obviously there's so much of you in those shows that I'm sure it probably was kind of a victory for you for the naysayers that kind of, you know, maybe second guessed your career choice after coming out of Harvard. Yeah, I think my mom's okay with it now. <laughs> 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 They, there was a book about the Simpsons in math I bought a copy for, her, so I was like, see, it wasn't waste. <laughs> well, who is your favorite character to write for on The Simpsons, if you could choose one? Oh, it's definitely Lisa. Uh, growing up, I wasn't cool like Bart. I was a little nerdier. My sister was more the Bart in our family, and um, I think it's a, a, a great character, and, and I have two daughters, so I relate to the Homer, you know, Lisa relationship very much, and yeah, no question. So is there maybe a secondary character? Because I know... It, the show's been on so long that uh, some of the secondary ones have kind of become the main ones over the year, too. Well, I love writing for Mo. He's, Hank is hilarious. Mo is hilarious. And uh, Comic Book Guy is a great voice to, to the things that the writers themselves feel or, you know, responding to comments we get about the show. So those are two I would name. And I, I know you're also the guy behind The Critic, and I think that was such a great show. What, what happened there? Why didn't that show catch on like it, like it should have? Well, um, there's a few reasons, but one was it started on ABC, which didn't really have a place for it, 
and it was moved to Fox where it worked, but then there was network politics, and it was canceled so they could put in King of the Hill, which they owned, and, you know, it did well, but we were doing well, too. Um, we just did a Hollywood Bowl show where John Lovitz was one of the stars, and it was great, and he mentioned the critic, and it got a huge ovation, which was very gratifying. But he then he goes, remember the theme song? Doobie, 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 canceled. <laughs> pretty funny line. Yeah, and it must be uh, a special feeling for you because I know nowadays you can't turn the TV on without seeing a lot of these primetime animated shows. So really, you're one of the guys that kind of, I guess, shaped uh, American culture in a way. Well, in 1989, it's amazing. In films, The Little Mermaid came out and The Simpsons came on. And prior to that, animation was really a backwater thing, just delegated to kids. And it exploded in both television and movies, and and it's it's funny. It was about almost exactly the same time that they, that it broke free. Well, again, we know the uh, big crossover with Futurama coming up. Is there anything else we can expect for The Simpsons? Are they are they going to be on TV for years to come? I think so. I'll mention on November sixteenth, we see uh, Willem Dafoe play Bart's new teacher, and he's a total psychotic. Uh, we have a Christmas episode on um, December seventh which is sort of uh, an episode for people who hate Christmas. And uh, coming in the new year, we see the Simpsons visit the home planet of Kang and Kodos. Excellent. Again, Al Jean, it's been an honor having you on. You are behind a lot of people's childhoods, so, and I appreciate you taking time with us. Thanks so much for being on with me today. My pleasure. All right, bye-bye.